here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make music like Yeji. As usual, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets from this video in the description for just $5 on my Bandcamp. If you want to support me, this is a great way to do it. And yeah, let's dive in. So to start off with, we're at 127 BPM, and as you probably heard in the intro, we're going to be talking about the more housey side of Yeji's music. I've noticed her music sounds like kind of like a blend between like lo-fi house and hip-hop. And yeah, I'm going to be showing you the more kind of like house tinge side of it. So to start off with, I'm going to show you these chords that I made. They sound like this. So these have something going on that allows me to talk about something I want to talk about, which is interesting chord shapes. So as you can see here, these aren't just basic triads. These are all actually minor ninth chords. And this is something that I hear a lot in Yeji's music. Like, she uses a lot of minor ninth, minor seventh, major seventh, mi major ninth, all that kind of stuff. These different sort of, like, jazzy and more interesting kind of takes on the basic chord shapes. Um, so I recommend getting into some of those and looking at, like I said, like, jazzy chords. Um, honestly, if you look up house music chords, you'll probably find a lot about this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so, like, what I did here, for example, is I have this pattern basically where it goes between... G minor 9 and D minor 9, and then it has these little octave jump up points here, like this, and this. Um, but these are all just octaves of the same chords, so nothing really too crazy there. But yeah, definitely get into the looking at the like minor 9th and major 9th and minor 7th and all those different kind of chords. Um, because those are really definitely pretty important for this style. As far as the synth sound goes, it's pretty simple. It's just this operator patch I made where I have two sine waves and they're just doing some FM with each other on the standard algorithm that comes when you load up operator. And the second one is an octave above the first one. The only other thing I did inside of operator here is basically I turned on this LFO here and by default, the LFO is actually routed to the pitch. The problem is, if you listen to the default setting, it's really hard to work with. But if you turn it down to like 5% or so, like I have it at, you get this nice kind of like warbling, like tape kind of sound. So you can hear when I turn it off, it, it's not as kind of like nice. Um, and yeah, so the way you do that is again, just turn the amount down. I have it at 5%, and then the rate, you know, like somewhere in the middle, it should be pretty solid. Um, as far as processing goes on this sound, I have this reverb, which all I really did on here was I turned the decay time down and the size down, and so it's just a very subtle reverb that's just adding a little bit of ambience on the end of each note, um, and just kind of helping to sort of bring it to life a little bit and not have it just be like a sterile, cold kind of digital sound. You can hear it just adds, like I said, that little bit of life to the sound. Um, and the only other processing I have on here is this EQ8, which is mostly just cutting out the low end. Uh, but it is doing a little bit in the high end there as well. Um, and this just kind of helps with the sort of like lo-fi sound and making it sound kind of like a cassette or like a VHS or something like that. It's like cutting out the high end, and you'll see I did it a lot throughout this project file. Really helps for that. Um, so the next sound here is this bass, which sounds like this. And the bass is very simple. This is very similar to the bass in Rain Girl, um, if you know that track. And yeah, all it is is just this driving bass that follows the chords. And then the synth sound is really simple. It's just operator, um, but it's only one oscillator, so there's no FM going on. It's just this saw wave, and then I have it going through the low pass filter with a little bit of an envelope. The envelope isn't too high, because if, you, if I turn up the envelope too high, you'll hear kind of what I'm talking about when I say that it gets like a little bit too kind of like bright that way. Whereas this is just like a nice little bass kind of thump almost. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty simple sound. It's just kind of like a nice old school kind of house bass, I guess. Um, and then yeah, the next thing I want to show you are these vocals. And so I want to preface this actually and say I wasn't going to like, I wasn't going for an exact copy of Yeji here. These vocals kind of sound like her, but obviously, you know, it's kind of hard to emulate someone's voice. But what I did want to use these as an example of is I want to use them as an example of the processing that Yeji uses on her voice because there's kind of like a few things that 
I think, really make it sound like her that she does that I wanted to cover here. And, yeah, so basically the vocals sound like this. Imagine, imagine. So kind of sounds like her. But, again, the main thing here is the processing. So the way Yeji usually processes her voice is it sounds kind of lo-fi. And the way that I got this is basically using an EQ. So what I did here was, like I was saying with the chords, I cut out the low end. Um, and that definitely helps a lot. I'll show you without the EQ. Imagine. And then with. Imagine. So I cut out the low end, and then I added this little bump here up around 10K. Imagine. Which I'll show you without it. Imagine. It's kind of just like cutting out that little bit of like really sizzly high end and then boosting around there in a way that just kind of gives it, like I said, like that kind of like nice old school lo fi cassette kind of sound. Um, so the other thing that I think is really important here is this delay. And this delay is basically a ping pong delay, so like any kind of stereo delay would work. Um, but it's set pretty fast. And it's got a high feedback and a low dry wet. Um, it sounds like this. Imagine. And so this is something I heard a lot in Yeji's music. And this kind of goes with the like lo-fi sound as well. Because I hear like kind of part of that sound is like having these vocals with like the really quick. It's referred to as like a slapback echo if you're familiar with that. Um, and yeah, what this does is it just gives it a lot of space and a lot of stereo width without having too much delay that like just is going to take over the whole mix you know it's kind of like more sparse um so yeah all i really have here is like i said it's just a ping pong delay it's set really fast or pretty quickly um and then i have the feedback up quite a bit and then the dry wet down a bit so you get that feedback but again the dry wet keeps it from like really taking over the whole mix and the only other thing i have on there is this reverb which sounds like this imagine so that's just adding a little bit of extra life on top of the sound. Just like with the chords, that like really short reverb like I have here, which is just, you can see I have the decay time down a bunch, is like, it just kind of helps give it a little bit of life and space, like I was saying. So the next thing I'll show you are the drums, which sound like this on their own. So the drums are pretty simple. Um, they're basically this rim shot, and then a few hi-hats and a kick. Um, so the rim shot sounds like this. And all it is is it's this rim shot sample. I'll show you the original one. And then basically all I did was I put it in here. Um, and then I put this EQ on it. Again, cutting out the low end and cutting out a bit of the high end. But not too much. Just to give it that lo-fi kind of sound. Um, underneath that, I have these reverb rim shots, which is something I heard in Rain Girl and something that I hear actually a lot in Yeji's music, are like little kind of spacey percussive elements like this. So what I did basically here, it sounds like this, is I took these two rim shots, this one and this one, and then I put them through this reverb and just put it on basically at the end of every two bars on the four. If you don't know what I mean, I like counting these as quarter notes will be like one, two, three, four. So I put it on the four of every two bars, basically. And it just adds a nice little transition element. It kind of like tells you, you know, it's like, oh, this part is over. Time to go to the next chord or whatever. Um, I'll show you in the full mix. Imagine. So, I mean, it's subtle, but again, it just kind of adds a nice little transition element. Um, so, I recommend trying that in your tracks. Um, the next thing I'll show you are the hi-hats, which are pretty simple. They sound like this. So, the first one is this open hi-hat, which sounds like this without any processing. So, that's the dry sample that I was working with. And then I put this EQ on it. And again, just sort of setting like a band pass with a little bump in the high end, just to give it the kind of lo-fi sound. As far as the close hi-hat goes, it sounds like this dry. So I just have that playing eighth notes, um, which is something I heard, again, a lot in Yeji's music. Like, she'll have a hi-hat playing eighth notes like this, and then an open hi-hat on the upbeats, like that. Um, but yeah, and then so all I have here is it's just this dry sound. And then I put another EQ8 on there. I think that might be the same one from the open hi-hat, honestly. Yeah, it is. So it's just the same kind of thing, cutting out the low end, boost, boosting a little bit in that one high end spot, but cutting out the high high end. Um, and then I added this little auto pan on there because 
there were kind of a lot of things going on in the middle of this track, like stereo field wise. So I wanted to add this auto pan to this little hi hat, so it could just kind of be moving around throughout the track. And it just helps to give some space in the mix. Um, so the next thing I'll show you is the kick, which is pretty simple. I didn't do anything to it. It just sounds like this. Um, this is just like a Yeji style kick, like kind of just deep and boomy and like nice sounding. It fits well with the bass. So, yeah, and then the only other thing going on here is this cassette noise, which sounds like this. It's very quiet. Um, it's just a cassette noise sample. There it is, a little bit louder. Um, then all I did on that was I just cut out all the low end. Because as you can hear, or potentially feel, there was just a lot of low end rumbling going on in the sample. So I wanted to add that filter to cut that out. Um, so yeah, I mean, the main things to take away from this are like the way the vocals are processed. Again, just trying to make them sound lo-fi with the EQ and then the tight delay. And then all the stuff I was saying about like the chords and the, uh, and the drums. And so yeah, so that's going to be it for today, guys. Make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments. And make sure to like this video and subscribe. And maybe even share the video if it really helped you out. I will see you guys again tomorrow with another tutorial.